Welcome to the Sabiat Design video. In this video, I will discuss how to create projects, how to create or import sites, and how to create links. Okay, so let's um, make some examples of how we can create folders, projects, and import sites. To create a folder, you can click on folder here. And I'm going to call this level one. Once that is created, we can go to uh, and create a new folder. We call this level two. And we can keep going and have um, any depth. So you can organize your projects in whatever level you want. Um, as you can see here, uh, the, the path is shown on top. You can navigate on this path by just clicking directly on the path and it will take you to the different levels. So here we can see the different levels. And this is done intentionally so you can now easily navigate uh, using this um, uh, path. And uh, then you can create your projects and organize it in the whatever way you think is best. So now let's create a project and we're going to call this project demo. Uh, some things that I have to mention here, you can write a description of what the project is about. The <clears throat> you can set up the uh, standard as ANSI, ETSI or based on, uh, on location. So based on location we'll use coordinates to determine if the link is ANSI, that is uh, in North America, or ETSI International, and automatically will select if you select the based on location option. You can also use the based on location option to select automatically select between the ITUR uh, P530 standard, international standard, or the Crane Began's Forget North American standard. Uh, obviously, in any of these uh, parameters, you can uh, overwrite them manually if you desire to do so. One way uh, or two way availability means that one way you're going to have uh, results for each direction and that will be especially useful in the um, link budget <clears throat> or two ways you'll have one availability result for the link. Units can be uh, metric or imperial and based on location will be the same, will be based on coordinates, based if they're in the uh, US, uh, they'll be imperial, and uh, international will be metric. Waveguide to shelter refers to the distance between the base of the tower and the equipment, and uh, this is used to calculate the wave uh, waveguide length when using the indoor configuration. Clustering it refers to the ability to uh, cluster sites when you have uh, projects that have a lot of sites and um, that helps with the rendering for the web browser. And uh, this minimum size cluster will determine um, what the, the uh, minimum cluster size is. Okay, now that we have saved this, we're going to go into the project. So there are four ways how to import sites. The first one is to click on the Add Site button. And a drop-down uh, dialog will show up uh, with uh, some information that has to be completed. The minimum information required is the site name, latitude, and longitude. And for example, we're going to fill here a site called Y. And I already have some coordinates here that I can use. Coordinates can be in um, decimal degrees or they could be in um, degrees, minutes, seconds. So I'm just filling this one in um, uh, decimal degrees. And then you can uh, fill in all the other information like uh, call sign, antenna registration number, tower type, for example, if it's a self-supported tower, on a pole, guided tower, it's a, a pole, rooftop, etc. Um, you can also 
set up the height. For example, this is a 150 feet site. Site, uh, city name, state, address, and remarks. And with that, we can create this site. If we want to zoom to that site, we can use the locate site feature. So if we do that, it will zoom to this area. That is one way. Another way to import sites is to use uh, Google Earth. If you have sites uh, marked places in Google Earth, uh, you can just copy them. So I'm just going to copy this location. Come to uh, Avia Design. Open the Paste Site from Google Earth uh, window by clicking on the button. And you can paste the uh, KLM file in here. And that will allow to import it. To locate that site, we can just use the Locate Site and we can find that location that is really close to the one we just created. The third method of importing sites is to use a file with multiple locations. In order to do that, we, we can go to, uh, you can click on sites on the uh, right type uh, corner and we can import or export. So we're going to just import some sites. So I, I have already uh, created some uh, sites that are uh, saved in a CSV format. Other supported formats include uh, includes uh, Excel. So you can say you can have Excel files or CSV files. So let's open this um, location, and we can see that. We have imported additional sites here. here. This uh, slide shows the file format that is accepted to import sites. And um, basically it includes the site name, latitude, longitude in decimal format, call sign, antenna registration number, uh, tower type. So these are the accepted uh, valid inputs. This could be as they are shown here or in lowercase. Structure height, uh, city state address remarks in uh, units. This one is important to tell the system what the, um, the units are. So they will be automatically converted uh, once they are imported into a link. And this file shows the uh, how the, the file looks like. So these are the columns defined in the um, in the slide, in this slide. So the site name, latitude, longitude, um, antenna registration number are um, and um, basically could be in comma separated or it could be in an Excel format. Now as sites have been imported to this project, we can go ahead and create links. To create a link, basically you click on one site, you wait for the color of the drop pin to change to orange, and then click on the target site that you want to connect to. There are two ways to get into this, um, this uh, link. One is by clicking on the list here on the left uh, side. The other one is to click directly on the on the link. So we're going to click on the link. This um, <clears throat> will take us to the the basic in advanced tab. Two tabs. The basic in advanced tab um, and <clears throat> the link uh, uses what are called radio in antenna templates so a radio template includes all the necessary information to calculate a link that includes the standard frequency band channel size 
radio transmitter, radio access card, power option, protection configuration. And uh, recently we added the um, third party option. So there's a distinction between Aviat uh, equipment generated using uh, or centralized database or files uh, imported, uh, data imported using uh, Patlos text files or uh, done manually. Um, these filters, there's a, lo a lot of them. So we have created what is called a radio template filter. A radio template filter allows to filter existing uh, templates. And some of the important fields here include the manufacturer. If it's uh, uh, Aviat networks or third party, that means third party means that there are uh, local files only available to the user who has imported them or created them. Aviat network um, uh, option basically will show all the equipment that we have in our centralized database. The next option is the ACM. Uh, yeah, uh, the option that could be ACM fix, fix multiband or ACM multiband. So let's select ACM for example. The next option is the frequency band. Transmitter type, it could be all indoor, all outdoor, for example, an all outdoor microwave that will filter down to less radios. Of course, if we put here, we'll see all the option for audio. Um, for example, we can select the WTM 4100, the radio access card is internal, the channel size, uh, the operations would include if it's a single channel adapter dual carrier uh, and adapter uh, dual carrier plus. The recommended option in this case is to use the adapter dual carrier plus, that is what we currently are using. The adapter dual carrier is a legacy option and protection in this case we only have one protection. We can search for uh, radios here and we can see these options. These options will be available will be available once we close this window in the radio template drop down menu. Um, in order to uh, speed up the calculation of the link we also have the option to add what are called favorites. So to add a favorite we just uh, click on the plus button and this will be added to this option where if you click on the use favorite side that radio we just selected will be available in this reduce link uh, list. We can also set the um, favorites in the uh, in a project level so once you create um, links they will automatically um, be checked so the radio template option will be checked if we create a new link for example if we say yes here come back to demo and we create a new link for example between these two points the use favorite option will be selected automatically so we will speed up the process and the only thing we will need to do is to um, select the uh, template we just created. The next option is um, to use select the antenna so there are two options there is antenna diameter that will use the parabolic uh, antenna gain formula to calculate the gain of the antenna or the other option is to use an antenna template an antenna template will basically use the it will be the antenna on each side so the in this case you have the vhl p6 slash W will be on Flatwoods in the VP6 slash 59W will be on Burnsville and we can see here the 
the all the options that are included in the template that includes the manufacturing codes on both sides the polarization any read on losses uh, or you can import antennas too uh, using the third party option here in advance antennas you can import those antennas and then come here and create your template with those antennas and use it the next option is to um, estimate your antenna center line as we can see here the tower heights have been imported from the uh, from the text file we imported where we imported sites um, and they're going to be used uh, if we use the estimate antenna center so in this case we can see that uh, we got heights to clear any obstacles in the field uh, and to meet the clearance criteria um, set for this link. There are some default uh, clearance criteria that are set for uh, North America and the ITU and uh, in this case we also have a profile that uses in the US the terrain um, <coughs> USGS net 10 meters and uh, NLCD layer. So the other thing for this link is that uh, the environmental details have been already loaded. Mm, as I mentioned when we created the link, the project, we set the uh, default to be calculation method selected using uh, location so to use the coordinates of the link to select the uh, vegans method for multiband and the crane method for rain so the tool internal has internal maps so it will look on the coordinates will select the appropriate rain region c factor average annual temperature and we'll use that to calculate the link and with that we are ready to calculate the link so we can calculate the link. Okay, we can also add um, spot frequencies. So in order to do that, we can click on channels. We click on add, and then we can input the channel. So I'm gonna create one here called channel one. So I'm gonna select one frequency and paste it here. And another frequency here. Um, <clears throat> then we can select the polarization, vertical, horizontal, or circular. We can save this, and we already have our spot frequency. So basically, we have everything we need to get a report. In order to get a report, we can click on report. The report will show here uh, a preview, but the um, recommend the report is the PDF uh, export that has a lot of details so we click once this button becomes green we can click on this button and um, we can open this PDF and uh, the call sign emission designator radio ID the, the tower type and if we go to the next page, um, now we, we can show the modulation, receive signal capacity, TX power, threshold, fade margin for each modulation. The same as the uh, multipath annual availability, the rain availability, total availability, outage, and time and modulation. This means that uh, if we assume that the radio is going to work on the highest possible modulation, it will show the time that the radio will be on the, that modulation and then on the lower modulations. And here we can see the channel assignments. And on the final page, we'll see the uh, path profile. So this is all that I wanted to mention in this video. So hope to see you next time. Thank you.